Hi, I'm Melinda Gallant and welcome to Cape Conversations. We have a wonderful, informative, and important show to talk to you about today. It's all about Parkinson's disease. And it's learning not to be afraid of the diagnosis, but learning to live with it. And we are going to be at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. And it is an exciting, wonderful place. So come along. Let's have a Cape Conversation. I'm now joined with Dr. John Allen, and, and tell me, Dr. Allen, what is your exact role here at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital? I am a health psychologist, and what that basically means is that 14 years I've been in this place, f uh, about five years in other medical rehab hospitals, mm -hmm. but it's basically I provide a lot of support to people going through all kinds of uh, adjustments, uh, all kinds of medical problems. It can be anything from stroke to cardiac disease to cancer to Parkinson's. So you help them deal with their issues and, and try to move forward as, as they must do. I mean, we all want to keep going, yep, right? Yeah, absolutely. So. It's a sort of normal adjustment to uh, dealing with any kind of major life change mm -hmm. that you have. So there are a lot of people who have uh, considerable stress, a big change in their function, Mm -hmm. um, it affects the family, so all the sort of uh, emotional and social changes that come along with a, a big medical situation. Now, I know you have a specific program, and maybe you have many specific programs, but you have a specific one for Parkinson's, is that correct? Yes. Um, actually, it's the big program that, that oh, I, okay. that, that's sort of my passion that I focus on the most. Okay. Um, I'm part of the Parkinson's Center for Comprehensive Care here at Spalding Cape Cod. And as a part of that, I provide health psychology services and uh, particularly a program called Parkinson's Positive Psychology Program. I know that's a lot of P's, but... Uh, <laughs> you have an acronym for it or something? PPPP? <laughs> yes. I, I don't think that's very good. Yeah. The triple P, quadruple P. <laughs> so the Parkinson's Positive Psychology Program is sort of an educational and support uh, program. It's like an eight-week course that Parkinson's patients and their family members will take. Oh, wow. And through the process, they're educated on a lot of the, the non-motor aspects of Parkinson's disease. You know, everybody knows about the traditional tremors and the slowness and the stiffness that people will get with Parkinson's, but there are so many other symptoms, including uh, some mood changes and very often some memory changes. So a lot of my education focuses on those kinds of uh, non-motor issues mm -hmm. and how it affects the patients and the families. Um, in addition to that, we do a lot of teaching of, uh, teaching of strategies that really help people enhance their quality of life, even in the midst of dealing with Parkinson's. So that gets to the, 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 the title positive psychology. That's the, the essence of studying what makes people resilient, what makes mm -hmm. people cope with things. And there's a whole body of research that, that looks at what kinds of sort of inherent personal qualities that you and I have that help us deal. So it's topics like resilience, it's topics like people's ability to have a certain attitude, perspective, um, a level of optimism. Um, a lot of topics like that. We can go into it more in detail, but those are the kinds of strategies that we talk about and teach to people in the program. And how do you deal with family members? You know, you're, uh, if you're a spouse of someone who, who has this, who, you know, do you have special programs for them or is it all combined, is it an integrated program, I guess I should say? The, the eight-week program is an integrated program. Mm -hmm. So I have both uh, family members and Parkinson's folks sitting around the table together as we, we learn um, about Parkinson's and some of the stressors on, on people. Um, what I actually do is after people complete that eight-week program, I separate out and I have some follow-up uh, meetings and groups for people and in those I have separate uh, meetings for just the caregivers, just the, the, uh, the partners mm -hmm. and separate meetings for just the folks who uh, have Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons. I mean, it's nice sometimes for people to have uh, groups where they can share with other people, to learn from other people, very private uh, discussions about the challenges. 
and sometimes having it separate from the family member is helpful also. But the initial program is everybody all bunched together. And the, and that and what do you see comes out of that when you're um, you know everybody has known somebody who's gotten Parkinson's maybe it's a grandparent or a parent I'm certainly of the age that it could have yeah. could be a parent um, what what do you see when you bring them in from the beginning the initial conversation and then at eight weeks do you, you know what what do you find is there a is there is there a change maybe an attitude you know I mean I would come in if, if somebody if I was given the diagnosis that I had Parkinson's disease yeah um, and we're going to talk to somebody in a little bit I think about that you know what how did it, it would make me I'd be afraid I would be absolutely you know, and then you have a spouse or a, a partner or a, a ch you know a child who is living with you or going to maybe have you live with them um, you know how do you how do you approach that? I mean, how what is the well? Number you know, one, through? I would I would say initially it is very very normal for people to have some uh, reluctance and some nervousness about entering a program like that because there's the fear of being amongst other people, seeing other people who may be at different levels or stages of the disease, mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, fearing that uh, you know that might become your future, so to mm. speak. So there's a lot of reticence in terms of, of joining. But it's a, it's, it's a remarkable thing when people actually do uh, take the step and enter the program. I mean, you know, people go through a normal period of just having a hard time accepting the initial diagnosis. But when people get to the point where they really say, I need uh, to learn more, I, I need to focus on ways I can uh, optimize my situation and improve the quality of my life, they get involved in a program like this. And what I do see is it varies, but I have seen some very powerful and uh, heartwarming changes in people when they start to sort of take a look at themselves, learn about their condition, learn how to sort of avoid some of the pitfalls that people can get into, like understanding that stress is normal, understanding that uh, almost uh, 40, 50 percent of people do experience uh, depression and anxiety as a part of the symptoms of Parkinson's, not just because uh, you worried. Right, not yeah. just because you can't do what you used to be able to right. do. So when people learn about it, um, it's very powerful. I think people do get a lot out of the strategies, the positive psychology strategies. We, we do a lot of stress reduction activities. Really? We teach some uh, basic uh, things around meditation. Uh, we talk uh, around a wonderful uh, strategy about um, growing your gratitude and some of the science that supports people who really focus on a daily basis about sort of counting your blessings, how that can really change one's perspective. I guess what I would say mostly is that what people come from, it's, it's, it's all inclusive, but there's a powerful aspect of being in a room with other people who share the same thing and people who have the courage to learn from each other, share with each other, and I think that experience in and of itself is probably one of the most powerful things of the, of the group program. Just out of curiosity, because I'm a person who um, loves laughter and loves to make people laugh and loves to hear laughter and loves things like laughter all the time, Does that, do you find that that helps being a little bit, you know, to, to to make it fun, not make it fun, that's the wrong term, but to, to uh, laugh about some things. I mean, there's got to be some things that are peculiar and funny. Absolutely. I mean, I that, that might hit everybody differently, but certainly not. Humor is, uh, is, is absolutely a critical aspect, and it's a, it's a wonderful aspect of, of being together with a group of people, people being able to, to sort of be very uh, sensitive about, but also to, to, to be light about the things that uh, they all share together. Sure. And uh, to be able to, to laugh at oneself and to share some of the idiosyncrasies <laughs> that people go yeah. through, yeah. Uh, is, I think is very helpful. Well, excellent, excellent. And, and now you've been here for? 14 years 14 years, almost. Yeah. Almost 14 years, yeah. oh my gosh. And this program has been here for how long? Well, you know what, I think it's coming on, I, I'd have to check with uh, Dr. Lowell, who was actually the person who invited me in. I think yeah. I've been about two and a half years wow. as a part of the program, and I think it started a year or so before that. Okay. So roughly speaking, I would say four or five years, the Center for uh, 
the Parkinson Center for Comprehensive excellent, Care. Excellent. And um, because I always like to find this out about people. I always like to ask personal things. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, you live not in Sandwich, but you live in Falmouth, did you tell I me? I live in, a, the, in Falmouth in a village called Wacoit. Wacoit. Behind yeah. the hay and grain back in that area? The feed and grain. The feed and Melinda, grain. Sorry. Please. <laughs> I've been by. I've All I know is the shoe place across the street. <laughs> <That's> so. the, <laughs> yeah. That's Westies. Westies. That's right. That's right. So. Yeah. So, um, and, you, and you have a family here and you live here? I have two beautiful little girls oh, and my wife and we live in the village of Wakoy. And I think uh, it's been four generations. My family's been coming to Wakoy Bay, which yeah. is sort of, uh, it's a beautiful bay on the south side of the Cape. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much You're for taking most your welcome. time and giving us just a snapshot. You know, I... I I think we're probably going to have to talk more about this and, and hear more about it, but it's so wonderful to know that there is something like this so close to home, that Cape Codders for many years have had to go far away to get these kinds of services, and now it's right here. And isn't that wonderful? It is wonderful. It is wonderful. And thank you for all your good work. Thank you for having me. I am with Dr. David Lowell, and you are the, I'm just going to call you the head guy. Isn't that, <laughs> that's professional of me, isn't it? You are? The chief medical officer of Spalding Hospital, Cape Cod. Excellent. And one of the programs that you oversee is the Parkinson's program, is that correct? That's right. And what's the official title of that program? Uh, the uh, Parkinson's Center for Comprehensive Care at Spalding, Cape Cod. Excellent. And now tell me, doctor, we, we've um, have just met and I really need to know the basics about Parkinson's disease. Um, are there are there certain signs that people look at? Are there symptoms for it? Is it how often is it diagnosed? Yeah, so Parkinson's disease is actually a fairly common neurologic condition. It affects about uh, uh, one in a thousand mm -hmm. uh, uh, people, I'm sorry, one uh, uh, one in a, about one percent of the uh, adult population. Of the, oh, the adult population. Yeah, okay. so fairly common. Right. Uh, and uh, what usually brings a person to uh, the attention of people around them, and ultimately mm -hmm. to the doctors, are, are uh, problems with movement. And so it's cl commonly classified as a movement disorder, a tremor, or, uh, mm -hmm. at, particularly at rest. It's uh, often on one side to begin with, and comes and goes. Uh, some balance issues, slowness of movement, and stiffness of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but it actually uh, affects people in a lot of other ways, which are sometimes more subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, one, one problem, uh, loss of uh, sense of smell, often occurs 10 or 15 years before the onset yeah. of any of the movement issues. And then other things that uh, often occur and, and are ascribed to uh, issues of aging, uh, problems with constipation, problems with uh, f urinating frequently, and then uh, other thinking issues, being slower to be able to figure out problems, mm -hmm. uh, often some sleep issues, uh, very uh, uh, acting out of dreams, uh, mm -hmm. which also can occur uh, early on and, uh, and be uh, very distressing to people who happen to be uh, sharing the same bed. You mean like you know, like thrashing and, and moving around while sleeping. Oh, or even, sleep or or exactly. Uh, typically during REM sleep, people are completely paralyzed, mm -hmm. but one of the uh, not uncommon uh, impacts of Parkinson's disease is, is that they, people uh, uh, lose that uh, normal shutoff that occurs I with see. the muscles. So while they're dreaming, they are actually able to move their arms and legs. And, and, uh, and so uh, if it's a, uh, as often as the case, a dream where they're protecting themselves or others, they can uh, actually start acting that out. Oh my and goodness. and uh, yeah. so it can be it can be problematic. Sure. But fortunately, if you ask about it, there are very good interventions that mm -hmm. shut that off almost a hundred percent. I was going to say, I hope it's not because people don't sleep, because I think half of the women in America don't sleep between a certain age break time period. So <laughs> well, I hope yeah. that isn't it. But 
um, because so many of us don't sleep. I mean, you know, we only get five to six hours of sleep, and knowing that we should get seven to eight. Sure, so. sure. But it's uh, part w one of the uh, symptoms of our society. You know, too, too, many things, too many things too many to things do and not enough time. That's it, that's it. Um, now, you've been, you're the head of this program, and it sounds like to me that this is almost a, a, a program that is a, could be a pilot program because you've brought, you've integrated everything from um, the psychological aspect to the physical therapy aspect to the medical aspect of the disease all together. You've brought the, all those components together and put them in the same room. Yeah, and, and it's worked out really well. It's, it's a little wonderful. bit of a different model from the traditional medical model, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, relies upon a, a neurologist to assess medications mm -hmm. um, and then refer out to uh, other uh, therapists. So we, we try to do it in more uh, uh, at the same time. So I actually see almost all of my patients uh, with uh, a physical therapist who is uh, one of two physical therapists who have worked for many, many years with people with Parkinson's disease. So the, the thinking behind that is that there are lots of of things which for the person living with Parkinson's disease uh -huh. are causing a huge degree of distress uh, making things at, say, uh, at home unsafe, um, and uh, we like to, I like to know about these things as soon as possible and be able to problem solve, and having the expertise of, of a physical therapist with me has, has proven to be very helpful. The other thing is a lot of the emotional issues of adjusting to uh, a condition which progresses over time, mm -hmm. it changes in ability to function, and impact that that has also on family members. So we usually, we have a big room, we see people, and, <laughs> and there is typically at least one other family member, not often a uh, spouse and several children, uh, and we talk. And so that takes time also, you know, sure. so for a new patient, an hour and a half, follow a patient half an hour. Uh, and we, we, can, we can deal with these issues uh, to a large extent. And then the psychological component uh, and having someone who is, uh, you've, you've met Dr. Allen and, yes. and spoken yes. with him. Yeah. Uh, that was the, th the third component that was really essential for developing this program because of the, the issues that the neuropsychiatric, as we call them, issues, the, the cognitive issues, the emotional issues. Uh, probably two-thirds of people with Parkin more advanced Parkinson's disease have anxiety issues, they have significant depression issues, they have the mm -hmm. sleep issues that I've right. talked to you about. Uh, sometimes uh, they will develop visual hallucinations, which are very distressing and mm -hmm. source of embarrassment and not talked about, usually volunteered unless mm -hmm. uh, you ask because people mm -hmm. are afraid that you think that they're losing their mind. So mm -hmm. having a psychologist who is, is uh, integral to the uh, functioning of this center very important. So on the inpatient side, uh, all the people who are admitted with Parkinson's uh, as a matter of routine are seen by Dr. Allen mm -hmm. and to help them and their families with the issues that they're uh, uh, facing uh, in the acute setting of being in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Some choose to continue to see him uh, afterwards and then he offers other uh, very important uh, uh, services, including having developed this positive psychology group therapy, Diff different from um, uh, a more typical, uh, it's, it's, it's not a support group, it's actually a medical model mm -hmm. group therapy sure. read by, led by a psychologist and very powerful. Uh, sure. It's made things, uh, I, I can actually, um, I know that even if I don't know, I, <laughs> it's easy to tell. When in the follow-up, when they've gone through because of the, right. l the level of anxiety, general anxiety just dropping for both the people with Parkinson's and, and their spouses because they've, they've talked about it, they understand that they're not alone, that these are issues that other people mm -hmm. uh, have dealt with, and most important, they've learned methods to, to help help them uh, with these uh, really significant adjustment issues. Sure. Now, it sounds like to me, well, it sounds like to me because I'm uh, a layman, that this is common sense, putting all these factors together. But seriously, you, this really isn't done most of the time in, in this kind of area or in this 
specific disease, I would should say, I suppose. Well, I don't know if it's common sense. Uh, uh, you know, the, well, I mean, the issue, the, the holistic is approach. You know, the, it's the, the whole body. It's the whole. It's mental, physical, and emotional. So the issue, I think, is that uh, most neurologists have limited exposure to the world of rehabilitation. I was mm. fortunate mid-career to have this whole world open to me of wow. rehabilitation. I, I can say that uh, when I was in a private practice and mm -hmm. uh, and had finished my training and uh, for 12 years was in practice in New York, uh -huh. uh, the whole concept of rehab was was um, it was a black box. Yeah. So <laughs> we had the people in the hospital, right. and, and they had their stroke, or they had a worsening of their multiple sclerosis, and the case manager would uh, find a place for the person to be referred to. We had no idea uh, what, what was on? going on. <laughs> and <laughs> then, you funny. know, some period, was a, it was a longer period of time right. those days right. that people spent in rehab. Sure. So maybe f six weeks later, they would show, they would come back to the office and they would be looking a lot better and their medicines would be a little bit changed and they would say Me how too. great it was and it was like oh this is very good right, right. so but it, it's still the case that you know most of the people engaged in rehabilitation are, are physiatrists not oh, neurologists there's right. a subgroup of, right. of neurologists um, who are, are engaged in the rehabilitation model and uh, most physicians who do uh, work in the with people with Parkinson's disease have done a fellowship in in uh, movement disorders is sure. what it's called and and so I was just fortunate being in the right place with the mm -hmm. right people with the right experience being able to pull all the pieces together and then being supported by the administration here when I came with this idea I said <laughs> I got an idea I think this oh, will great. be really helpful uh, for the community it's an older population on the Cape absolutely a lot of people with Parkinson's disease is that right? and uh, very difficult for many of them to travel they were going uh, up to the South Shore or many up mm -hmm. to Boston uh, and we've, have been very happy and receptive um, having resources much closer to home. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, well, I'm not having to travel over the bridge for, is, I, you know, it's just for many, many people here. I mean, I don't particularly mind it, but a lot of people don't want to go over the bridge. For sure. That's why they came here. Right. You know, um, they, this is going to be their home and they want to be here. Um, so that is, is wonderful. And we were ta talking a little bit before we started here about the causes, and I know that in just my limited little bit that I know about mm -hmm. it, that um, it's thought to be caused by a lack of dopamine as you age. Right. Is that correct? Or well, yeah. Close? So, <laughs> yeah, no, that's 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 part of the story. Uh -huh. uh, so, there's a part of the brain uh, that produces uh, dopamine, which gets it's a chem which is a chemical, and it's a right. chemical messenger that. Uh, uh, has very specific pathways within the brain mm -hmm. and, and one of them relates to smoothness of movement. So in Parkinson's disease that those cells that produce dopamine are uh, uh, lose their function over time. Mm -hmm. And you actually have to lose a lot of the cells before you start to have the slowness of movement mm -hmm. and the rigidity and the tremor, probably 80 to 90 percent of the ones that you oh. were born with. and the, you, you typical person would maintain through life but there are actually other parts of the uh, brain that are involved with Parkinson's disease and other brain ch chemicals brain transmitters mm -hmm. neurotransmitters that are involved as well and it turns out in the last five years that it's not only the brain that uh, has uh, cell changes as mm -hmm. a result of Parkinson's disease but uh, areas in the spinal cord which is the reason why people develop uh, some of the unexplained shooting pains and sense that they're very cold or very warm. Mm -hmm. uh, and even uh, the nerves uh, that are outside of the brain and spinal cord, for example, those that are around the colon are involved and that's why people very commonly develop uh, severe constipation and, mm -hmm. and other problems with uh, bladder function mm -hmm. and sexual function. Amazing. Now, is there something um, is there a test for it? Is there a certain test you do? Is there a test that people could take at the age of 40 to know if they're going to have it when they're 80 or no? Not quite. Uh, there's been a huge amount of research, uh, productive research, that's been done in the last five years, uh, which is, uh, so we're at the brink of being able to do that. There are some uh, tests that can be done by doing a spinal tap and looking mm -hmm. at the spinal fluid that or look like they hold some promise, but right now, 
January of 2011, there is no diagnostic test that can be done other than a brain biopsy. I see. Um, to so look. it's symptomatic. So it's, sim it's symptomatic. There are PET scans which can look at uh, how the brain is metabolizing certain chemicals which are uh, probably 90 percent accurate uh, but clinically you can uh, be pretty close to that as well. So sure. no blood test uh, that's available, no simple imaging test, CAT scan or MRI of the mm -hmm. brain, for example, do not diagnose Parkinson's disease. They can, they're sometimes done to look for other conditions which look similar to Parkinson's disease that can mimic Parkinson's disease, but typically that don't respond very well to the medications mm -hmm. and other interventions that work for people with Parkinson's. I see. Well, it's, what's so amazing to me is that here we are on this little spit of land called Cape Cod. Uh, beautiful spot. Beautiful spot. You, you live on Cape Cod, right? I, I live have to on ask Cape that. Cod. I grow oysters. You I'm grow a, oysters. Oh, yeah, All I, right. I, well, we'll know I'm where we're totally going committed. next New Year's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our New Year's Day oysters. Um, and uh, you went to BU or BC? I did. BU. BU. Mm -hmm. Went to BU. A medical? Medical, yeah. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So even though you're from New York, right? All right, we won't talk about the Jets or the Yankees or any of that stuff, right? I know I have some relatives who yeah. are very upset today. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Most New England Patriots fans are not. <laughs> right. But, uh, anyway, um, that you live here. I mean, do you find it amazing that the, there is this kind of a program being not only accepted and used in a in a facility? I mean, this is a fabulous facility, but you might think it would be in you know Boston one of the great medical capitals of the world or Chicago or LA or you know someplace bigger and fancier or something well I was amazed to find that this hospital existed when I found out five and a half or six years ago mm -hmm. and was introduced to it um, and uh, one of the the striking things about the medical uh, facilities on on Cape Cod and the physicians is that they're people and and on the islands as well I mean they're mm -hmm. people who uh, have been well trained uh, and uh, do a very good job uh, but they want to live here for one reason or another so there's really great medical care I mean even for things like cardiac oh, sure. surgery sure. And, and so on I mean it's it's um, it's amazing uh, oncologic care cancer care and right. so on uh, the the uh, there's there's uh, um, an amazing array of medical services available in a place with a really fairly uh, small, what, 60,000 uh, year-round residents? Well, I actually, we, I think we have a few more than that. Oh, is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. I think it's it's closer to around 200,000 and swells oh. to about over a million. So. Oh. But um, now you moved here how long ago? About six years about ago. About six years ago. So I've lived here 30 years, and when I moved here, there were only 5,000 people in the town wow. of Sandwich. So. That alone in itself has grown into this, you know, kind of little mini beautiful New England thriving village, yeah. so uh, of which this lovely hospital is a part of, so which is yeah. great. Uh, Dr. Lowell, I want to thank you very much for thank your you. time today and, and explaining the program, explaining what's going on. If people want more information, they probably could go on online somewhere, I'd like to... Spalding, re, uh, Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. SpaldingNetwork.org. Slash Cape Cod or something to get to the Cape. Um, or, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> and or they could go to rhci.org. Dot org for now. now for now, yeah. right, and I be think shifted around. I think sure. that'll be going for a while. RHCI. Dot well, you know what's awful is we're very hard to change our ways. Yeah. We know it's Spalding. Yes. And yet... I tell people, well, I've got to, I've got to go to a show today at RHCI. RHCI. Well, it's 15 so, years. You of know, it's it's ingrained in us, so it'll yeah. take a little while to rebrand. But uh, no matter what the name, doesn't matter. What a fabulous facility! And thank you. Thank you so much for all the good work you're doing. I mean, that's uh, truly amazing. And and uh, from somebody who, fortunately, has never really had anybody close to me that has had the disease, but if I did, how wonderful to know that you're going to treat the whole person with respect and kindness and show them how they can make their life better going forward even with this disease. That's, That's what fabulous. we try to do. Fabulous. Absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks to again. To you. Take care. Thanks. Well, I am back now with two wonderful people that I have just met. 
um, who are doing great things. I think you're doing great things. First of all, Don Lucier, who is a physical therapist with the Parkinson's program. Yes. And all, and who's been with Spalding for six years. Six years. Six years, excellent. And Wendy Kosel, who lives in West Barnstable, not far from here, right. who's a part of the Parkinson program. Aren't you a smart lady? You know where to go when you get sick, right? <laughs> right. Excellent. <laughs> so now tell me, I want to talk a little bit with you, Wendy. Um, you, how long have you been in the program? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's made a, you look terrific. And I, and we had a little conversation about that. I said, you look so good. And she goes, I know it's terrible about, you don't get any sympathy, sympathy, I said. Sympathy, you, you that's right. <laughs> so now tell me, um, how has the program helped you, do you think? Hmm. That's a wonderful question. It's helped me have a community mm -hmm. here when I only moved here three years ago. Wow. So to have a diagnosis of Parkinson's uh, virtually at the same time we're moving into a new house and know very few people here um, was a challenge. Sure. Right. Sure. Sure. And um, I might remember before we finished talking um, how I got here in the first place. Um, must have been a flyer somewhere, maybe at the Y. I'll have to think about that. Well, that's all right. That's okay. And Don, you've been with this program since its inception, is that correct? Correct. And, and what exactly do you do? Um, I do multiple things. I, <laughs> I initially <laughs> started the, exactly, I started the, um, the Parkinson's Wellness Program that we run through Boston University. Okay. It's their evidence-based program um, that is a six-week program for people who are living with Parkinson's disease. It meets twice a week and the each um, each day it's an hour and a half and the focus is really on exercises, strengthening exercises, stretching exercises and then awareness of how to make activities of daily living, getting dressed, getting out of bed, getting to the bathroom, walking better. Mm -hmm. So that was my initial involvement with the Parkinson community down on Cape Cod and that program has expanded to um, Harwich and Wareham wow. and Sandwich. So I am currently running the Harwich program, and Karen Warren, who you'll meet, is coordinating the program here in Sandwich. And Jamie, a physical therapist from Yarmouth, is coordinating the program in Wareham. Wonderful. And then I joined with Dr. Lowell in the Parkinson Center for Comprehensive Care as one of the physical therapists that meets with the patients and their care partners. Well, now, Dr. Lowell was telling me just a, a little story about somebody who was, who was in bed and was having a difficult time getting out of bed, and it turned out they were wearing a flannel nightgown and had flannel sheets. Right, which uh, is like Velcro. Which is like Velcro, <laughs> right. right. I don't know if I could get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, flannel have I sheets. got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very difficult. So tell me, so, so I understand that's part of it, but what would you tell a person who said, gee, I'm having difficulty getting out of bed once you die, find out what is the issues are? I would, after asking what, what they were wearing, yeah, I would, I would recommend either the sheets become silk, maybe, or the pajamas become silk, and think about fabrics that don't, um, that play nicely with each other. So even when we speak about getting dressed, especially on these cold New England winter days, and layering, we recommend that, you know, the jacket be lined with silk and not put, you know, fleece jacket over a flannel shirt. So when, right. you know, just thinking about fabrics and how we can help people to move easier. That's a, that's, uh, and it's such a little thing. It almost, again, I'm going to go back to it seems like it would be common sense, but who would think of it? I mean, you exactly. wouldn't think of it, right? For sure. Now, do you um, also deal with things like their diet and, and that, or is that a, would that be someone else in the program? We can discuss diet a little bit. There are certainly some restrictions that some people with Parkinson's disease may have, and it has to do with one of their medications and levels of protein mm -hmm. in their system. Um, but in terms of diet, if there were some significant issues, obviously we'd you know, recommend them to speak with a nutritionist or a dietitian to make sure caloric intake is okay and that, um, you know, I, I mean, it's mostly, mostly just eating a healthy diet. Right. And, and Wendy, so here you are. In, uh, have you worked with Don before in uh, physical therapy? Before? But no, I, during the program, have you worked? Yes. 
you work with yes. Don? Is she, or do you work with several different people? Well, I work with several, several different people. Um, but Don was, I was in the first program, mm -hmm. and you taught it pretty much. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you were in right. charge of that program. So I've known her the whole time I've been here. And also, she meets with Dr. Lowell and me and my husband when I have my follow-up visits. I see, yeah. I see. Now, did you take a fall? Is that what brought it on that, oh my gosh, I've got something going on here? No, I took a fall just this past Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and, had, and felt in many ways like I was starting over again because oh. I lost a lot of function. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I was just feeling lousy uh, for about four or five years wow. and I had a doctor who diagnosed it as fibromyalgia and then I had a doctor who diagnosed it as Lyme disease and that was that's I think I had a clue myself that I was probably had uh, Parkinson's but I used those two as a way to hide out sure, um, sure. and um, why would you have known that you had Parkinson's most people don't even know what the Simmons My dad like, had it, oh. but uh, and I think that it's not it's unusual to for it to be multi generational in a family. Right. It's I uh, have to check with Dr. Lowell about mm -hmm. this, but I think I think that it is not common. Right. Um, but he didn't get it until he was eighty three, and um, well, you're what twenty four, right? <laughs> <laughs> Move up a few decades, a few decades okay. <laughs> right? Um, what was the question? Well, the question was, how did you know that you uh, had it? So once you found it, once you thought that you may have it, what was your next recourse after finding out it was, certainly wasn't going to be Lyme, it isn't Lyme disease. I'm sure they put you on a program of antibiotics. And 17 months. Wow. Yeah. Um, and you weren't getting any better. Wasn't getting any better. Right. Um, I saw Dr. Lowell. So you came And here? he was the one who diagnosed the fact that I do have Parkinson's. And I... Um, I had been through enough conversations with various healthcare givers to know that um, help was right here. Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel you're doing right now? Because you, as I said, you look wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, I'm doing, I'm recovering from a fall now. That's probably what you were thinking about when you asked me about the fall. Um, I fell off of a curb and hit my head and that kind of inst that happened around Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and I felt like I've been coming back ever since then I uh, it it was hard to uh, have a fall interrupt what I, my routine which was going pretty well actually and did you find that uh, you had to work harder in whatever you did here in your physical therapy to, to move forward Yes, I'm not a person who likes to exercise. <laughs> I don't know many people that really love and, it. There are a few, I suppose. Um, well, wait a minute, you must love it. Right, Don? Do. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is somebody sitting yes, there. So we yes, have, we have Dons in the world <laughs> so that we can <laughs> Thank you, Lord, survive. Right? Yes, right. Um, I have spent more of my rehab in, in the psychological issues, psychological and spiritual, and mm -hmm. have spent time with Dr. Allen on that and uh, but I'm increasing my exercise a little bit each day but that's, that's all we step ask there, yeah it's step in the right direction right right I mean you know yeah I, I am convinced Rome now. wasn't built in a day right? that's right <laughs> <laughs> so, excellent excellent now Don um, what would be a, a typical day once you the patient has seen Dr. Lowell and maybe some other folks um, what would be what would you do with a patient what would what kind of of activities would they do, would they go through? So in the program that Dr. Lowell and I see pa patients uh -huh. together in the Parkinson's Center, um, I'm responsible for balance testing and walking testing. So this actually came from the wellness program through BU and when Dr. Lowell and I met, we decided to keep those same, what we consider outcome measures. So these tests are standardized in the physical therapy community and we do three tests and depending upon you know how long it's been since a patient's visit we may do one we may do two we may do all three but we're able to keep what we would th consider objective information on the patient so patients and care partners come in how are you doing they tell us 
we do the tests and we can see, oh yeah, actually those medicines are, are working, you're actually doing better, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and then Dr. Lowell does his assessment. So that's kind of the physical therapy role within that clinic, along with problem solving, looking at footwear, giving recommendations for how, pe how people can stay safer. Um, and then the other role, you know, physical therapy here in the hospital is to, to get people exercising. You know, there's plenty of evidence coming out now showing that we need to do strengthening with these patients. We need to look at their cardiovascular fitness as well and make sure that they're staying in shape. And we've actually revamped the program this past year along, you know, BU had, had done the research and collected the data so that we're actually doing more cardiovascular exercise. We've somewhat taken out the support group. The, we used to have a half hour discussion. We've taken that piece out a little bit. I don't know. Some people feel like they really miss it. Some people right. really like the exercise. But that's kind of, you know, where the, where the physical therapy role fits in. Well, they, I mean, I know that for, for um, a person who doesn't have anything, you know, a, any kind of physical disability or, or any, doesn't have Parkinson's, that they say, you know, if you're feeling down, go out and take a walk. Right. Yeah, a little more difficult for somebody who has Parkinson's. They can't just go out and take a walk. I mean, they can, but it's probably a little more complicated than that. So, do you put them on a treadmill? Do you do weight? You know, hand weights. We I do. Just, we do both. We do. You know, whatever. Um, whatever they are interested in doing I see. is what we'll recommend they do. So, if it's walking, perfect. If it's running on a treadmill, great. Bicycle. It's just something that the person needs to want to do and like to do and right. enjoy doing and I know the treadmill is not usually that for a lot of people um, <laughs> and we also do recommend kind of exactly yeah <laughs> so um, and we also do recommend that they fit it in as part of their day as an appointment if mm -hmm. they can get it over with in the morning usually better um, try to coincide it with this on time um, during their medications because a lot of times their movements are dependent upon where they are with their medications so when they're feeling really good, um, you know, time to take some of that time to do some of the exercises. Do you find that when, after they do the exercises, that they're almost, um, you know, up, you know, having that feeling of, of a little bit of feeling better about themselves, well, I got it out of the way, but I did it, you know, I didn't want to do it, but I did it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, just from my experience with the group, I would yeah. say that people who come to the group and participate with 10 other mm -hmm. people and do the exercises and have that socialization. There's no question when they're leaving at the end of the day, no matter how tired they are, you can tell that people have just had a good time being with other people who are going through similar aspects. I don't know, Wendy can certainly uh, answer how she feels at home after doing her exercises. So, Wendy, <laughs> this is it. This is the big this question. This is it. I, make, I have to make the commitment. Yes. <laughs> do you feel better after you do the exercises? Yes, or I do. Yeah. I clearly do. It's, it's funny. All of us feel better after we exercise. That's right. And and uh, we don't do sometimes what we should do, like right. our doctor tells us to do. Right. You know? Or your like physical that. therapist. Or your physical therapist. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Don. Um, we're going to bring in your husband in a few minutes and talk hey, to him a little bit. And you. How about that? Sounds great. You can just sit right there. All right. This is John Kosel. Right. Your better half of how many years? Many. No, we're newlyweds. Newlyweds. But that's a story in and of itself. Oh, my I'm God. Oh, I don't know. I, oh, God, I'm, I'll be still my heart. Is this one of those, we, we knew each other a long time ago and we came back together? Oh, I'm going to start to cry. Yes. So now, now, so how long have you been married, seriously? Uh, six years. Six that's years, wow. Mm -hmm. And how long ago did you first meet? High school. We went high to the same high school. We were high school sweethearts. Is that right? Went off to college going in different directions and uh... In Massachusetts or another no, state? No, uh, in Pittsburgh. Oh, We're in Pittsburgh. very happy today. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Um, in Pittsburgh, a suburb of Pittsburgh and uh, we had not seen each other till we both ended up at the cl a class reunion. And no uh, way. the fire still burned. There you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. How wonderful. What a great story. So, tell me, John. Yes. Now, um, you're married to this lovely lady, mm -hmm. um, and you've moved to Cape Cod, and you get the diagnosis, and you find, somehow you find Dr. Lowell, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Lowell, Dr. Lowell <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, come to, to Spalding Rehabilitation Center and start the program. How do you feel about the program? 
I think it's fantastic. I, I mean, I think it's been mentioned in earlier conversations, the coordination of service is just a big help. Uh, I mean, usually my experience has been in medical issues, you get shuttled from office or division to division to division, and oftentimes there's not much, if any, communication. Uh, this is uh, one-stop shopping in a sense, and sure. uh, it's, it's just been very helpful. And uh, the people uh, are just so uh, giving, and, and uh, it's, it's just nice to, to see, you know, professionals interact professionally uh, with a caring, you know, spirit and attitude. So it's, it's been a real plus. Well, and probably for you, as someone living with Wendy mm -hmm. and seeing it on a daily basis, how wonderful to have that support for you as well, I would think, having knowing there are other people out there that are doing the same thing. Yeah, and I think that's what is especially unique from my perspective uh -huh. is that there is a there is a support group. Um, they use the term caregivers. I like the term caring concerned and caring people better, but it, yeah. anyway. <laughs> you have to work on that. <laughs> the that giver part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's been helpful for me to to be with other you know, uh, care persons, caregivers, and 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 listen to their uh, situations and their solutions, mm -hmm. and uh, just very very helpful. I mean, initially I, w I was a bit worried that it, uh, it would frighten me off, mm -hmm. and in reality, I think it's just been such so, such a wonderful sharing, helpful kind of experience. Uh, and on the positive side, these are folks that have partners that have had the disease for 15, 20 years. So I mean, at our age, we got a lot of we got a lot of good years left to to really enjoy. Right, and if we right. uh, do it correctly and do it uh, wholeheartedly, I think uh, that's an uplift. Absolutely. So, uh, and I think that's unique. I, I truly, I'm not aware of anything quite like this. So. Right. And how ha have you seen a change in Wendy since you've been coming to the program? Yeah, I think we're both comforted by the fact that it's here. Yeah. I mean, so there's that. Um, I mean, everybody's different in terms of their Parkinson's symptoms. And so I, I don't know, I, and I don't tend to think of the progression. I, I, I tend to more stay with the here and now. Right, and, and, live for the and, moment. And enjoy the moment. and. Uh, we get along fabulously. I mean, we do laugh. <laughs> we, d we do argue. <laughs> we do, you know, have tears from time to time. I mean, we have all those kinds of things. But I think, generally, we're, you know, pretty upbeat with everything. I mean, that's my take of it. Uh, an interesting dilemma is, uh, and this support group has been helpful, you know, where, you, where are you as a, as a spouse uh, from the standpoint of being empathetic versus being a nag in terms of, well, have you done your exercises? <laughs> have you taken your pills? Does he do that? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and balancing that and knowing sure. it's, it's an issue that, yeah, that, that we can talk about and hopefully laugh about usually. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, so does the, do you think that, the, that when you meet as a group, mm -hmm. um, hearing other people say, you know, well, I don't want to be a nag and, and having probably suggestions on how not to be a nag. Sure, sure. <laughs> the approach. Yeah, sure. You're and still being a nag, it's just in a different way. A caring <laughs> nag. A, care, yes. a caring, a caring nag. nag. Um, and you know, I, you know, being careful of not burning out is a big one, mm -hmm. and, and that you need to have your own uh, interests and identity apart from the disease. The disease can't be all-consuming, right. or you the relationship then becomes a relationship focused on Parkinson. Well, we're certainly people who have more going for ourselves than just contending with the disease. I mean, that there's certainly attitudes and interests and adventures we'd like to do that uh, we don't want to put them on a the back burner no. or, or, or let the, the Parkinson's uh, take over. So. And, and what, do you have anything planned for doing something wild and crazy? <laughs> or not so wild and crazy? Oh, we do. We do, yeah, we do. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, uh, we're we've been looking for some time at taking a river cruise in Europe. Oh, how wonderful! Yeah. And where do you think you'll go? Like down the Rhine or down the Seine? Uh, we're, we're we're working on that with some other couples that we hope will join us. Wonderful. That are close friends here in the Cape. Yeah. But, uh, Great. So, uh, I would guess France right now. Wonderful. So. Oh. And we had a family reunion last summer in Disney World. There were 15 of us there. Wonderful. It's great. 
great. Yeah. And um, did you have children before you met John? Oh, yes. A family before yes. John? And you had a family before mm -hmm. you met Wendy? And the kids, well, how are they, you know, reacting to all this? Not the, not the two of you together. Just, <laughs> the, just, I suppose the diagnosis is what I'm talking about. Are they coping pretty well with that? And uh, yeah, I think I, I think again that it's it's different. I mean, overall the kids have been great. I mean, I think they've accepted uh, Wendy's kids have been super in I'm accepting sure. me and 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 my two too have been I think gracious in accepting Wendy that uh, mm -hmm. they really root for us or support us and sure. and Wendy's family is right here in the Wellesley Boston area. My family's in Pittsburgh and Bloomington, Indiana. Oh, so. Sure. Yeah, there's a bit of a commuting distance, but yeah, uh, yeah uh, they're aware of what's going on. They, uh, I think, they're tactful, and, and at the same time, I think they're just, in, you know, the bottom line is they're supportive. I think. Right. And do you, are they? Um, have they, Have they ever been? Have your children been out to s to see the program or be a part of the program at all? Or no, they haven't. But they like to hear about it. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Sure, sure. They're much more into Sandy Neck Beach. Yeah. <laughs> when they come to visit, <laughs> see, this is where they put it in perspective for you. Right? That's right. true. That's absolutely right. true. Right. 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 Well, that's not a bad thing, I don't think. No. That's probably a good thing. That's for sure. We're also talking about having a, a Parkinson's free day. Wonderful. Where we're not going to talk about it, or you know, we're not going to have any appointments, or just going to do that. Yeah. And we had a wonderful um, experience. We were in, we lived in Florida for a couple of years, and uh, when our friends would gather for cocktails or dinner, mm -hmm. we would have this rule that each person could talk for five minutes. That was it, and then the health discussion was done. Over. Yeah. And I, we're starting to do that here too. You know what? That's not a bad idea. I mean, mm -hmm. We've all been to those parties or gone out with friends. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on. Well, I had my knee, and I'm going to have, it. and then you kind of go, you want to do this? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, right. Because it's, it is. And you know what? I think people who kind of dwell on things, you know how serious this is. Right. You know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You're getting help to do it. Mm -hmm. You're living for today. Man, what more could you want? I mean, that's I think right. that's it. I mean, I think you've got the right attitude for sure. We're absolutely sure. John, yes. thank you for taking a few minutes with us. We're going to put you to work. We're going to make you exercise. <laughs> I love it. Well, I've been joined right now with Karen Warren, and she is the physical therapist for the for this particular building. Is that correct? Yes. For the Parkinson unit. Yes. Or the yes. yes. It's, okay. I run the Parkinson Wellness Program. You do. Okay. Much. Parkinson. Yes. You know, I really I even like the term Parkinson's Wellness. It's not Parkinson's sickness. It's Parkinson's Wellness because That's you're good. you're moving forward. You're doing day to day. That's great. Yeah. So sh now she is going to show us and have you do <laughs> some of those exercises that you're supposed to do on a daily basis. She just graciously said I don't have to get up from the floor. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I would be in that same position, Wendy. So, okay. all right, take it away. Karen. Okay, one of the exercises that we do is coming up onto the, onto the toes. So holding onto the railing. Yeah. We usually do sets of 10. Are we doing a shorter version today? <laughs> we can do a couple more. You're doing such a good job. I each looks like you could do 50. Or we could have her do the progressions, which goes to one leg. But we'll do that it's for balance. Okay. Okay. One of the other exercises we do focus on balance. So I'm actually going to move out of the way here for a minute. Have you focus on something in front of you? Mm -hmm. You're going to pick up your right foot off the floor. We usually do a couple of these. You try putting your right foot down, and then we'll try the left foot. And you turn that and go. Keep focusing. A little wobbly. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit wobbly. Good. Okay. And then you can put back down again. And if the other exercises we do is a stretch for the hamstring muscle. The, the book shows the exercise for participants to use a so, so you have a book that they yes, get? Yes, they do. They, so they, they have a manual to leave with. If we change anything for them, uh, make some sort of adaptation, I usually make a photocopy of, of it or we write it out in their book. Sure. 
So a lot, you know, everybody's got, maybe not everybody, but some people go have gone with an injury and gone to a physical therapist, mm -hmm. and they hand you out those little, you know, copied sheets. So you right. do the same thing to include in their particular, um, what they need to do at home. Right. For so their we'll, program. I'll just tuck it in their booklet, or we'll write some cues in there for them to remember it. Sometimes we have caregivers when they have John come in for the last class or two to see if she needs some cues, or can't remember things, if she, could, you know, she can have a little help at home. And how, often, <laughs> and how often do you do this? Uh, is it on a weekly basis? Would she come in and, and do this? Or? She would come in on the Tuesdays and Thursdays if she was participating in the wellness program for six weeks. Um, generally, the first couple of visits, just trying to get to know people, have them get to know the exercises. Usually towards the end is when I tend to have families come in. Okay. Unless the, the person needs a little bit of extra help or something at first. And then at the end of six weeks, you send them on their way and say, good luck, or are they allowed to call, come back? Are they... they can come back. We have many people who do a tune-up, so they're yeah. coming back. Um, they're, they tend to be people who, who need structure for exercise, and they really like the group environment. It, it's it's a, a really good time. Excellent. Okay, so you're going to put your, we'll do the right foot, so you're going to put your right heel up. So this is traditionally done uh -huh. at home on a step, right? But we don't have stairs for everyone to stand on. So, so you, and then you're going to take a nice, forward, we'll keep your spine nice and straight. Move out of the way from it, and let you look up in front of you. I really feel it. Mm. So she's stretching her. So she's stretching her hamstrings, which mm -hmm. is a muscle that runs back here. It tends to make it hard for people to stand up right. tall if right. it's tight there. Right. And what's very important for her is that she keeps her spine straight instead of doing like a rounded right. or she would be getting her back a little bit more. All right, and then we'll switch. And looking up, a lot of people tend to want to look down. You can look up at me this time. Um, and in their posture, they tend to follow right. their head. So right. we really work on posture. So you can look up at me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. There's a lot of other people too in the classes that have orthopedic issues, hip, knee, or something. So we may make changes for them as well. They may do it in sitting. Okay. And you got one more? One more short one. All right. One more short one. I'm going to go out. Let's see. Are you going to use the other one? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be trying a little bit of a lunge. Okay. okay. So you're going to put one foot out in front of you. You're going to let your back heel lift up. And you're going to come straight down. Good. Excellent. And how many would she do normally with this? This is a tough one. I'll tend to have people do like five mm -hmm. at first. On each side, right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Karen. You're, you're wonderful. And what good work you do and how you help people is just fabulous. Oh, um, thank you. you know, there's so many, we need so many people like you. And Wendy, you are a gracious, kind person. Congratulations on your new marriage. <laughs> Just a, what, mere six years or something? Right. Like that. So, right. Anyway, um, it was so nice to meet you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Very You're nice a lovely person, you. and I wish you only the best. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you for joining me today at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital, Cape Cod. Wasn't it wonderful to get all this great information about what they're doing here about Parkinson's disease. If you would like to have more information about Parkinson's disease, it, uh, well, the wellness program, or perhaps you want more information about how you might get a loved one into the program, just contact Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital of Cape Cod or go to their website. In any case, thank you for joining me today and see you next time.